Hey everyone, Rob from Southgate Media Group here. Before we get started with this podcast, we have a quick message. If this is your first time checking out the show, we love that you found us and we really hope you enjoy it. What we have to say is for the subscribers. If you enjoy our shows, would you please donate to help keep these going? We don't want to have to put traditional ads on these shows, but this does cost money. So we really do rely heavily on donations. To make a donation to the show, please go to our website, www.southgatemediagroup.com. Go to the page for the show, and in the upper right-hand corner is a donate button. It takes you right to PayPal, and you can donate whatever amount you want. Thanks a lot for listening, everybody. And now, on with the show. Files, a Southgate Media Group podcast dedicated to all things heroes and heroes reborn related news and whatnot. I am Lilith, and on the hunt for specials with me, as always, is one of them. It's one of them, Ricky. What up? <laughs> up for the session today is episode 407, my absolute least favorite episode of Heroes of All Time. Sorry, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Once Upon a Time in Texas, but if you read our tweets when we first when when I was doing the tweet outs to lead up to the binge, I put One Upon a Time in Texas. So yes, uh, <laughs> nice, cool. Let's just anyway, get into it. Um, <laughs> we'll get into the recap and start with the technical specs. This episode's original air date was November second, two thousand and nine. It was written by Aaron E. Coletti and joined by a new writing partner. Ari Wallington and was directed by Nate Goodman. And we will go into the synopsis. Hero travels three years into the past to save Charlie's life from the hands of Sila, only to have things complicated by Samuel's presence. Meanwhile, something from Noah's past is revealed. Boo! Even though I love yeah. Elizabeth Rom. Boo! <laughs> yeah, definitely. All right. Anyway. Let's do this. Um, the only important things, people, places, or things we need to know for the story development is Lauren Gilmore and Petey. So be on the lookout for those names as we discuss stuff. Let's start with, with the let's start with the kind of background story to this because basically I've got hero is I've got hero. I've got notes on Hero on his own. I've got notes on Hero and Sila. I've got notes on Hero and Charlie. And I've got notes on Hero and Samuel. So let's just go on to the oh, least well, important. Let's, let's, let's back up to episode 405. At the end of episode 405, uh, we're uh, sick in the hospital. And, you know, Peter goes on that mission to, to find a healer for him or whatever. He comes back. And the uh, old girl with the hysterical blindness tells him, hey, he just disappeared. And so this is actually where he went. He kind of time travels to 2006 with his hospital clothes on and boom, burnt toast died. Yes. So it's basically all hero and all my notes are to do with hero apart from two lines, which are about Noah and his storyline. The first one is it's a trivial storyline at best. And Bad the next time. one, is, and the next one is there's a Primatech break room. Is there one for us and one for them? Oh, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that's basically all i've got yeah this storyline just didn't really fit into the kind of story i think it was weird it was a very weird storyline it was like a screeching a halt son when she shows up and they start having that chemistry together and i'm like nope nope Don't definitely yeah <laughs> anyway and we're... Sorry, I I can't. I haven't. I've only watched like up to this part, or you know, the next episode. She doesn't make a comeback, does she? She's only in it for this episode, right? Oh no, she makes a comeback. She's okay. quite vital in the present day towards the okay. end. Oh no, she's so, here yeah. to stay, people. If you didn't like this character, sorry to tell you, she's here to stay <laughs> for quite a while. So I'll start with like a couple of little things about the story that I've I've kind of dived, like picked out on the story of kind of the episode as a whole i like the quantum leap reference because i'm a big quantum leap fan which is a uh, hero saying oh boy and then pushing to the credits um there's obviously this episode pushes the importance of charlie for hero and i like the whole minefield i put minefield in quotation marks of converging paths 
And it kind of feels like, you know, everyone was kind of converging to New York. But at this point, everyone's converging to the Burnt Toast Diner, which makes an appearance in the next episode, because obviously they rebuilt it. So why not use it again? And um, yeah. I've also got I like the fact that they've given a context. They've they've changed the context of Brain Man. So, yeah. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Like, I don't even know what to say about this episode. This is one big trying to be retcon and it's stupid. Um, I like. Well, go on. Go ahead. No, 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 no. You, you, you... It's, it's give it it's to me. Really yeah. ridiculous. Like he saves Charlie, but then he doesn't really. And like it just gives me a freaking headache. This is why you just shouldn't have one of your main cast time travel. Like, okay. Um, teleporting is awesome. At this point, I was like, why does Hero even have time travel power, you know, powers? Because every single time he does it, he messes something up in a major way. It, it yeah, really def- stops me from liking Hero at this point. Oh, no, I, I totally agree that the kind of time travel thing makes it very plot holy. And yeah, but at the end of the day, I still really like this episode. And the main reason why I like this episode, because it's, it's hero centric and he's very, you know, he's always been that kind of, he's always had that innocent morality. And this one is him like basically carrying the episode. And, you know, on a simple level, he's still a very very sweet and likable character. And I really, you know, he's able, I think he's able to carry the episode, even though the whole time you're thinking, well, this is, you know, he's changing the past. It's stupid. But at the same time, I like when he says, um, where do you, there's one point where he says, where do you want to go, Charlie? And my heart broke because I was just like, come on, like, I want these two to get together. They were always like one of my favorite, they were one of my favorite ships of the kind of show when it first started. So I was glad to have her back. So, I never yeah. understood it, and I don't think that Hero can carry an episode, and I feel like, in my opinion, this proves it. Like, he needs Ando to play off of. Like, everybody else just sucks in comparison to me. And it was just, it was a brutal episode for me to get through, and he's just being this selfish cow at this point, trying to save Charlie, and he's buying into Samuel's BS, and it's just like, man, when are you going to learn your lesson, Hero? When? He's also... But he's also dying, and dying people do 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 do, do <laughs> um, <Yes>. really. <laughs> they do really strange stuff, and you know, he obviously wants to like right the wrongs in his life. And one of like his the major wrong in his life is that Charlie died, and you know. But it's not maybe, his I wrong. Like, I suppose. That's, that's all that I'm saying. Like it, it just, it, it, like I, like the fact that his father dies and they have that touching, poignant moment. It's like all for not. He has totally forgotten that at this point, and it's a shame. It's like all these lessons that heroes learned has gone out of the window. I guess he's regressed, and it's just frustrating. Oh, fair enough. Um, there's was there anything about the episode that you liked? Uh, I like. Noah talking about how Sandra wanted to marry a poet and we kind of like learn a little bit about that and I will say yeah. that like HRG and old girl Lauren have like hella chemistry <laughs> like Fair better enough. than Sandra like I, I totally dug that um I just didn't like the fact that she like knows he's married and gives him a key anyway <laughs> it was all icky so what have I got I've got I like You're not gonna with the hero. Eaten? Oh man, yeah. But Asana, she wasn't even like mentioned in the credits. Like Santi- Santiago got a mention. There was no Nora in there. But it was good seeing her back, even though it was stop <laughs> <laughs> Did they did they create new scenes for this, or was this all like just deleted scenes? Because I, think I this was stock footage for yeah, it was stock footage. Okay, that it was weird seeing that bit, but um. Yeah, I like I like the way that kind of hero would play on Sila's need to be special and the fact that, you know, at the end of the day, he just said, you know, you're going to die alone. It doesn't matter how, how special you are. No one's going to love you. No one will turn up at your funeral. You will die alone. And, you know, the fact that he kind of you if you compare him to season one, he it was this big thing of him being able to kill Sila and here even with a tumor in his brain, he's still able to kind of defeat Sila. Um, the fact that, you know, Sila carries on doing what he does 
is strange anyway because of what just happened. But, you know, convenient plot point is convenient. Um, yeah, I I just love all this. I really like Charlie and Hero together. I think they're really good. Um, and I think the highlight has got to be, you know, when Charlie realizes what Hero has done and just goes off on one about it. Because obviously, you know, it's... That's the thing about the kind of fairy tale relation, uh, fairy tale endings. There's never really a fairy tale ending because at the end of the day, things have got to carry on. So yeah, I kind of like that. Um, and you know, Hero emoted his pain and confusion at Sam's betrayal very well. And then we end up with you know the reveal of Mohinder, who I completely forgot about at this point. So yeah. The corpse. <laughs> Yes. Did you? Eight weeks were you, ago. <laughs> were you when you were watching this the first time? Uh, do you remember like thinking, oh, like do you remember thinking where is Mohinda, or did you just think he wasn't going to be in it, or did you forget about it? What did you? What? No, I mean, I thought the way that they shipped him off and you know kept him out, I thought like maybe Sunil was off doing something. Apparently, they just didn't have a storyline for him up to this point. And I was like, mm. that baby, but I knew he was going <laughs> to live because duh. He's a main character. Exactly. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's basically what I have to say about it. Do you have anything else to say? I like all the additional stuff about because this this is the timeline of, you know, right before, you know, Tyler first tries to attack Claire. And so we get all these glimpses about what was going on in, like, yeah. Midland, Texas around that time. And we see the cheerleaders go by and get on the bus. And we see Claire talk to her dad and... We kind of get a glimpse of the intrapersonal stuff that's going on in Primatech Files. Mm. Um, I, I like that part. The hero part of it just did not work for me. I liked the, like I, I talked about the whole connotations of, you know, him. Because I, I think I tweeted at this point that Hero was essentially the, or he's always kind of been the, what's his name? What's his name from The Flash? Is he the Carlos? Yeah, Carlos. Carlos? Oh, damn it. Um, Cisco. Carlos yes. Is Hero, yeah, Hero is essentially the, the Cisco of the show because he's giving nicknames to everyone, not as successfully as Cisco's doing. But, you know, you've got Butterfly Man, Evil Butterfly Man, <laughs> um, Nemesis, and you've got Brain Man. And I really like the connotations of Brain Man, which... You know, he, he brought up in season one, but here they have much different con con connotations because obviously he's the guy who's able to fix Charlie. He's able to fix what's in her brain. I really like that kind of, that interplay with the wordplay. So, yeah. Even though, you know, it is what? This is the fourth different version of Sila we have because he's not season one Sila and he's neither of the Cy Nathan Silas. He's a completely new one. So, yeah. Yeah, he didn't feel the same as season one. Like, I don't think season one Tyler would have even given two craps about that. Because it wasn't until he met his father being a pathetic, lonely mess that he really got obsessed with not becoming that. He was just on yes. a power trip at this particular mm -hmm. point. So he would have absolutely killed Hero. Just saying. Definitely. Yeah, that's fair enough. So let's move on to the review. Who is your favorite character in this episode? <laughs> Noah for telling that saucy little vixen to GTFO. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. I'm going to go with Hero because he's Hero and he broke my heart in this episode as, you know, he should because he's the best character in my eyes. Well, uh, anyway. Uh, that is the best and they just <laughs> wasted that potential. Yeah, I guess. I'm still, I'm still clamoring. But yeah, how about for... Character interactions. Uh, oh, uh, time traveling hero and Ando, where he tells him to go to the bathroom or wait or whatever, and he's like, "Why?" And he's like, "You know me. I always have my reasons." <laughs> you wait, wait here, wait, wait, stay there, stay. <laughs> That's what he does essentially, doesn't he? Treats him like a lapdog. Um, I will go with. I'm going to go with Charlie and Hero because you know ship them so yeah i don't have to say anymore i'm glad she she was brought back i'm really i was really looking forward to this episode and i don't think it let me down um but yeah uh how about scenes oh brutal 
Um, oh, maybe it's not a scene. Maybe it's more of a moment, but we'll call it a scene. It's where Hero and Charlie are like kind of talking, and uh, then Sally like comes in and he's like, he's eating the pancakes. He's like, these pancakes are really good. <laughs> Do you know what I'm talking about? I believe so, yeah. Like, that what? Makes... what are you doing? This is season <laughs> four, Siler. This is not season one, Siler. I know. It's not even season four, Siler, at this point. it's That that reminds me of uh, Campy Siler from um, yeah, the case. season three. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, you know, Siler loves his food. We know that now. Um, I'm going to go with... Uh, I'm going to go with the kiss, because, you know, it's... They're like really two innocent people and take into account, I, I thought about this as it was going on and I forgot to bring it up, but obviously, you know, Charlie's got a tumor in her head at this point. Hero's got a tumor in his head at this point. Why are they not just going to, you know, die together? Why is he going to help fix her um, and not help himself get fixed? But, you know, I think it would have been nice if they died in each other's arms. That would have been nice for me. I, I could have got yeah. on board for that. Yeah. You know, these two people just going around doing their bucket list. That could have been another anthology. So you've got one of them was Noah going off and writing the wrongs of his past. And then you've got Hero and <laughs> Hero and Charlie just going off and visiting places every The week. Bucket List Chronicles? Oh, my God. Fanfic <laughs> writers, y'all need to make that happen for us. And we will totally read them as long as they're PG-13 <laughs> on the podcast. <laughs> so what are you going to do for grades? I'm... Oh, dreading this you're not gonna do lines you have no lines oh yeah oh yeah yeah let's go a bit sorry what what are you gonna do with, with your favorite line uh let's see oh uh samuel to hero i've got my own butterflies that be crushing <laughs> <laughs> like uh yeah you do <laughs> i like um i kind of like my family is shrinking and our graveyard is getting bigger which is obviously samuel talking about roland Roland, um, and yes, I will tell you how you die. You die alone, I'm sorry. What the hell is that supposed to mean? It means that you will collect a lot of powers, you will kill many people, you will become strong, the strongest of them all, but in the end, it won't make any difference. We all gather to stop you, you're alone. No one will mourn your death, no one will shed a tear, no one. I wish I could change fate, but you must go on your path. And that is probably the nice... I know, right? It's like, like the nicest kind of, it's not even the nicest, but it's like, yeah, it is. It's like the nicest like way of like talking to Sila because you're, you're giving him what he wants. You tell him he's going to become special and he'll become strong. But at the same time, you know, on the connotations that we've seen, he doesn't want to be alone. He doesn't want, he wants to make a difference. And, you know, it kind of works in two ways. So, yeah, I really like that little part of Hero and Sila's interchange. I so, yeah. told him that the cheerleader, meaning Jackie, was at home sick in her bed and not to go. Like, I would have just told him some straight up BS to change <laughs> the whole. I mean, you're already saving Charlie, so that's got so many in- butterflies in and of itself. You know what I mean? So if yeah. he doesn't see Claire and he can't make the connection and all this other stuff, done and done. He never becomes indestructible. <laughs> Problem freaking solved. Imagine, no, I've just thought of something. Imagine, like, the anthology of, like, Hero and Charlie going away, and basically they go away and they stay in the current timeline that they're at, and they just end up going to, like, individual points at the Heroes, the Heroes kind of episodes from, like, now till the end of the season, like, now till, from, like, episode eight till, like, the end of the season. So, like, all you see is, like, Charlie and Hero in the background trying not to mess anything up, or they're the reasons why certain things happen. I really would have liked something like that like maybe it's it's future hero or like this hero who's the, who's the one who pulls um Siler into the drain for some unknown reason but yeah <laughs> oh. oh um okay so yeah about that grade oh no you go first <laughs> um i guess i'm gonna be generous because i don't want to give an episode a, a, another d i'm gonna go a c minus but this is big you know what no screw it it's an f for me this episode is a total what? this episode oh. is a total fail logically 
Um, and like I said, this is episode seven. It's supposed to be a turning point, and it's really not. The only turning point we really get is at the end of this episode with Mohinder's dead body and the reveal that Samuel made a mistake that he's trying to correct. And it's just like, you can't leave that to... I know, like, the cliffhanger thing. It wasn't really even a cliffhanger. It was just like, okay, whatever, Samuel. Like, this just... Uh, I just wanted to be done with this episode. I <laughs> I hate this episode. I'm going to go with a... I'm going to go with a B- because I really love the episode because I'm a hero fan, and that's why. And I will defend this episode to the end because you know even though it makes no sense it's getting hero and charlie back together and that for me is a good enough reason for itself Fan so yeah pandering is the worst is all that I you know think. what you know what it may be the worst with some other things like the whole kind of Sila, the Sai army thing but i'm a hero fan so i, I will take I this too, but I'm, <laughs> I'm objective about it Oh, I'm not. <laughs> That's okay. That's why I love you, Mickey. <laughs> You're emotional so, and I love it. So let's go on to Rapid the. Novel. No, the, the I've got a couple of I got a couple of trivia notes that I want to bring up. Come on, I know we haven't done them in a while. <laughs> it is awful for this one. No, I like this one, Laura. Uh, the Noah's the room key is 108 to the Midland Hotel, and it's a reference to Heroes episode 108, in which Sila originally chills Charlie. I like that. What's um, dead? obviously, what's dead? It should stay dead. <laughs> um, the woman who one of the women uh, is it Ori Wallington? She wrote Saving Charlie and was one of the writers on the episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, and Enough yeah. <laughs> that's basically it so we will move now we will move on to the comic or the graphic novel it's called smoke and mirrors and it is basically amanda trying to find a way in the carnival carnival it's amanda trying to find her way in the carnival with a v um she doesn't think her mother wants her so she's searching out sila she's talking about how it kind of feels like home and at the same time she's kind of going through the carnival and seeing all these people like a woman made of gold and she's kind of making a bucket list about the carnival so she's like you know i've got a i've got a big friends with the girl made of gold and all this kind of stuff and then it ends with her meeting samuel that's the, pretty much the end of it so yeah no trivia um okay so this episode was oh episode. this issue was written by aaron fitzgerald and the art was by michael Godos. uh the easter egg is a behind the scenes photo of Robert Naper looking very distraught. Um, yes. So, yes. Very much. <laughs> Sorry. Um, the following people were uh, live tweeting along with the episode. They are either tweeting, retweeting, or faving. We have Will Pedro 3, Skylar Artis, The Dimpled Dog. Oh, no. Sorry. The Dimpled Pig, Mike Schmidt 09, English Idiot 101, and Shine Die. All thank you very much. Looks like it's time for some shameless plugs and self-promotion. We'll start with the show contact info. We here at Prima Tech Files love listener feedback. If you would like to get a hold of us, we have a ton of ways. You can email us via primatechfiles at gmail.com. You can leave us a private message or interact with our posts over on facebook.com forward slash primatechfiles. We live tweet two episodes per week every saturday starting at 11 a.m eastern standard time for more information be sure to follow us on twitter at primatech files you can also find us on clamor tumblr and youtube by simply searching for primatech files if you enjoy this podcast be sure to rate review and subscribe to us on itunes what's that you don't have an itunes account that's okay we're on a lot of podcaster services such as stitcher and soundcloud all you have to do is search for you guessed it primatech files we're also on libsyn and if you want to follow our RSS feed there, all you have to do is go to primatechfiles.libsyn.com and bookmark the site to stay up to date with this podcast. Libsyn is spelled L-I-B-S-Y-N, just in case you were wondering. We look forward to interacting with you. If you love our podcast, be sure to check out Southgate Media Group's iTunes provider page to see a list of what other podcasts are hot and trending in our network. Or you can take that one step further and visit southgatemediagroup.com where you can find a full list of our 80 plus podcasts along with weekly blogs and information about all the hosts. With so many podcasts that cover everything from anime to wrestling, 
there's sure to be tons of podcasts that can interest you. Hey guys, you should know by now that you can find me on Twitter at Lilith Hellfire. If you have a Tumblr, be sure to check out it's lilithhellfire.tumblr.com. And of course, be sure to swing by my blog if you are a pop culture junkie or comic book geek at littlepopculturevulture.blogspot.com. I also host several other podcasts on the Southgate Media Group Network. Some of them are The Flashpoint, Queen Consolidated, and Channel 52. So if you are into, obviously, DC comic book related stuff, be sure to check it out. You can find my writings at tvbinges.com. It's a place for all your binge watching needs, and you can also create your own TV binge and we'll help promote it. We do a monthly binge watch, which you're more than welcome to join in. Just go to their Twitter at tvbinges just to find out more information. You can find me on Twitter at Ricky J D S. That's R-I-C-K-Y-J-D-I-A-Z or Z if you're American. And now it is time to wrap it up. Um, We want to thank you for joining us on this episode 407, discussing Once Upon a Time in Texas. Please be sure to send in an email if you agree with me or agree with Ricky. I want to know why people actually like this episode outside of, ooh, it's a whole episode dedicated to Hero. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely want to I definitely want to hear your feedback on this episode. I want to know whether or not you like this episode or not and why. So yeah, definitely just just leave a message on our Facebook or on our Tumblr or even on our Twitter and we will compile it and when this episode comes out we will give it a week and see who is in the right here. Is it me or is it Lilith about this episode? It's probably going to be you because everybody's a bunch of sympathetic, nostalgia driven people and i just ah, i'm not lilith you're not doing yourself any favor here I by it <laughs> so yes download the podcast save the world <laughs>